please welcome to the stage, Keith Arthur Bowman! <laughs> Tonight. 
ladies and gentlemen, the man who plays Daniel LaRusso. <laughs>
where it's just nobody wins. Of course, nobody. Wins. Rocky too. We Rocky filmed that. We filmed that in Atlanta, which is where we shoot the show. So cool. And just so you know, that fight scene was that, that rematch was it started at 7 p.m. 8 p.m. in February, February 40 degrees outside. It was oh so cold God. and that was so cold they had to throw heating blankets on it, wrap our feet up, and bring us in a van in between takes. So try staying, you know, two, three o'clock in the morning doing these elaborate fight choreography and, and uh, not pulling a muscle and, you know, uh, we, had a lot of, we had a lot of fun with it. Thankfully, no injuries. It was fantastic. I know we all loved it. For sure. I, I watched, I watched it's a great, it was great to be able to see that and, and the dynam dynamic that the characters have. And that's kind of where I want to go next, where these guys just for so long in this season, they're trying to get on the same page. They have this rivalry, and they're just like teasing us throughout, like, oh, they're going to finally do it. And then something, they just can't. They keep getting each other's way. It seems like that's coming to an end, but why William, can't these guys get on the same page for so long? Uh, it's a great episode of season one that I think is one of our favorites. It's different but same. Where there's, you know, if these two had the same childhood, the same sense, they'd probably be on the same page, but there's a gap between them. Johnny was raised by a sensei priest and an absent father, he was raised an absent father in Miyagi, and so there's just a lot of differences in the way that they were taught, and, and then all the baggage you're carrying forward from, from the defeat in high school and all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's a dance of, uh, there's a lot of minds between the two of them, um, but in a way that I think the characters need each other, and uh, that's why they work, is that they sharpen each other, you know? And we can learn from each other. We're trying to put our past by us, but it's not easy when you got a thick-headed beer drink. A couple of old souls. No, it's, you know, it's what's so fun with the show is we, the audience, and you guys, you, people, I have people come up to me and just say, I just want to take the two of you and make you just see what we see. You know, and that's part of the fun of it. And then they do, you know, as the series has evolved, they are making headway, but they'll just take one sniffle or blink or wrong way of opening a beer that will send them back down and skin their knees. And, they gotta, and that's part of the fun of it. Well, and that's the last thing I want to ask you where it comes to the um, kind of the journey that we're about to see them go on because they've worked together at the end there, which is a Great moment, by the way, when you stop the, 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 the announcer and tell him he's also two time. Yeah, yeah. And that was a great moment. Those kind of moments, he deserves it. Two time. Yeah! So, tell me a little bit about where these guys are going, where Daniel is right now, where Johnny is, and what we think, you know, we're, we're about to see without spoiling anything, obviously, but the, the, the journey of the characters. Okay, here we go. <laughs> It'll stay in this room, right? So season five opens with Ralph Gardner. <laughs> I think, um, you know, at the end of season four, you guys know, I mean, Cobra Kai is victorious and uh, uh, illegally. Um, um, I might add that as far as Ofer Luruso, he's calling in reinforcements as we yep. the end of season four. Right? So it's about only Daniel Russo knows how bad Terry Silver is. He's the only one who has seen that. So going forward for him, it's about, you know, all bets are off. We've got to take this guy down. Cannot contaminate the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> it's fun. Even saying it out loud, it's just fun. Uh, but it's part of what we love, you know? It's so important, you know? Um, so uh, sometimes when you are the only one who sees something, you wind up looking like the crazy one. So maybe for the Russo, he winds up on that kind of path before he... You know, it's always about going, losing your balance and finding your balance. This is the great Mr. Miyagi. Yeah. 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 Johnny, at the end of uh, the season four, the, the, in a way, he got everything he has been hungry for, and that is a connection with his son. So, yeah. karate, oh karate is, a, the, you know, is a secondary in this moment. The, his other primary concern is he... He lost Miguel, but he doesn't know. He doesn't know that he did that. You know that that drunk scene. He didn't realize that happened. He doesn't know he pushed Miguel away. But now Miguel is off and um, maybe in the danger zone. Um, so Johnny's heart's there. And I can only tell you that. Um, but uh, as far as the All Valley goes, you know, he, he they made a bet, and if if they lost, they lost. And, um, 
you know, Johnny's a man of integrity, so. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. It's surreal for me as I see the Miyagi Do and the you know, Cobra Kai, Eve Fang. I think it's fitting. We should see some people from Miyagi and Eve Fang. Yeah. Let's start with Miyagi-Do. You know them as the LaRussos. Samantha and Anthony LaRusso, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, 
that uh, Sam went and, and won. And I think she won in, in, in style, and I think that should have been and the legally. ending. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, sorry, Sensei. I, I keep forgetting. I'm sorry. Mark Pope, ladies and gentlemen. Mark Pope! You need that! Anytime I have a chance to talk to the creators of the show, I always bring up like the Star Wars references the way that I see it. There's a lot of Star Wars puns that I see. So there's dark side, there's light side, and there's people that turn from the light to the dark. We saw it, we saw it with Caruso, and we certainly saw it last season. We saw it with Sensei Kreese, which I never thought was going to happen. Um, so I know that when you're talking about your character, is that something right away? Like, yeah, I could see him making that turn. That would make sense with, with Terry and all that. Or did you have to hesitate? Because we've never seen that side of him where he starts to really care for Johnny. Johnny was, uh, you know, he never wanted to lose Johnny, uh, you know, and he also never wanted to engage Terry Silver because he would have rather won and handled it himself. But there's always that part of John Kreese that he's not proud of, you know, and he needs to win. But the bottom line is there's still a vulnerability which you catch little glimpses of like you did with Tori. And, you know, it's, it's a complicated character. He's not a villain. He's misunderstood. And, uh, <laughs> okay. It's like Daniel Russo, right? <laughs> Sorry, Rob. Uh, this is the king. The king of irreverence. Talking. <laughs> uh, but also speaking of dark side, I just mentioned both Anthony and, um, and and for self Dallas. And when you guys are. are in that moment, because you guys talk about a switch. When you're making that, you have to play that role where you're a real jerk off. Uh, to, be, to, to be honest, I'm, I'm saying, like, I say that because I watch the show. You guys, sorry, the language is fine. But, when, but still, you have to be, is that hard to do? Like, to really be, because you're, you're, you're a bully. Yeah, you know, it's. It's pretty easy to be mean to Dallas. Um, <laughs> oh, um, wow. It was interesting because I think for so long Anthony was just kind of the worst. But to actually see him like kind of feel bad for what he's doing a little bit, what he's doing to Kenny, yeah. um, and then at the end, I guess Kenny uh, gets his revenge. But yeah. Right. To see him kind of start to fall to that dark side. That you were and that's the thing with Kenny is that Kenny has to come from this place. You've got to what you did, Dallas, to take that audience in the beginning. It was like this. Dancing on the street to where it's like, oh, you feel you love this kid, and by the end, it's like there's so much anger and so much frustration that comes out of Cobra Kai, and what he's got to go through with Robbie, and I want to talk about that in a second, too. But tell me about playing that role and taking that reverse of playing from light and then going right to the dark. Yeah, uh, playing from light and going completely to dark was so much fun. That's something that I've definitely never done, and it was a completely different change for me, and, and it took. Um, a lot mentally just to figure out how to get into that that dark place and a kid who was really struggling with finding his identity in a tough world and being a teenager and then all the moments that i had with Griffin were so hilarious and we had such a great time with that but it, it, i just had to put myself in a situation put myself in his shoes and think about imagine if somebody is bullying you and he keeps terrorizing you and ruining your experience at, at middle school so Going through that change was difficult, but I had the most fun of my life, the best time of my life. And then of course working alongside uh, the creators and everybody, they, they were so welcoming to me and they, they helped me out with my journey and I had a great time. It's fantastic. So when you were, the same thing, that the journey that Robbie has to go on in this because he starts off, again, from the dark side. And then what he's got to see, and he basically sees himself and Kenny at the end there in that moment so as you, and, and the connection that he's got to go through with his dad so can you tell me about this season like was it it seemed like the, one of the most emotional arcs that Robbie's kind of had to go through uh yeah you know I had, I had thought about that a lot uh, just from the back of the set. <laughs> because you know he just basically gone to juvie he doesn't know if he killed a kid uh uh, and, you know, he's basically trying to figure out his life from here on out. He's gone through a breakup, and 
what he's going to do is basically trust nobody, and he's going to focus on himself and make me to do what is right. And it sounds like he happens to be there. Um, so his mindset, <laughs> his mindset is basically, I'm going to focus on myself and only myself, and I'm not going to worry about myself. It doesn't matter what the consequences are until he realizes that, you know, taking from Daniel's point of view that, you know, he has to be a mentor to this kid. And he kind of leads him down the wrong path. And he notices that and ultimately realizes that he was wrong and by the time he gets to the end of prison, which is what we did, uh, which we were waiting for many, 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 many years. Uh, Woohoo! Uh, fun scene, great scene to shoot. Uh, but it was, it was an interesting season. Uh, it was definitely very emotional for me and uh, Elias to kind of figure out what was the right moments to incorporate in each episode. Well, it was great. We all felt the shortness of build up of what we're about to see in the next season, obviously, that relationship you guys are building. And I wanted to ask you for it, where you had this, there's so much more we learned about your character. There's so much more in depth that she was. She's straight up. She's straight up. <laughs> yeah. How much did you know about that kind of going, like, from seasons prior, learning about it last season? Because then, I remember just watching the scene going, whoa! Like, there was so, there's so much depth to it. You understand more with the turmoil that's been used you two, and then the understanding why more and more of what's going to happen there. So, can you tell me a little bit more about the, the depth of the character? I told the creators, Amanda's amazing, but she's too soft. Can we give her a grill? Can we <laughs> do something to edge around the bed? And they were like, met me at, you know, she was a thug as a child. And I think it worked brilliant. It did. Yeah. <laughs> it was great. It was fun to give a little dimension and, and context to Amanda, because, you know, she just showed up one day. People who are hardcore uh, Karate Kid fans, everybody wants to with Allie. Um, I got a lot of hashtag you're not Allie. Um, <laughs> you know, even after that scene with Allie, because I thought that was such a good transfer scene over. Oh, you're like, finally, she's there to take your crown. <laughs> Seriously, though, it was like that passing the torch, but it was the way that Amanda handled it. She handled She wasn't jealous. She wasn't mad. Mm. She had a great conversation with Allie and, like, one, oh, come on, let's talk more. And these two are going after each other, like, and she's like, they're both like settled down. It was so nice to see. So that must have been a, a great. That was fun. I feel like you could take it a different direction. <laughs> it was still very. It's high school. It was. She's not like worried about the guy. You know, she doesn't know who Ooh. Allie was. She's just like, oh, you were the, that cute girl you dated in high school. You never saw the movie. <laughs> 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 Tell me more. <laughs> so you can relate. Yes. And you, when you have this relationship with Johnny, where just going off of that, Allie, that was a moment where I didn't know what the hell was going on. The way that they set that up, where Allie and Johnny, oh my god, this is going to happen. Oh, man. Harmon, this is such a great relationship. Johnny, oh, screw it. Oh, we were right at the beginning. We were right at the beginning. So, because of the investment of everything that she's going through with Miguel and now with Johnny, so can you take me through your journey of the last season and kind of what she was going through? Oh man, how to build a family with Johnny. Johnny's so wrong in all ways. It's like couple counseling right here. Johnny's the wrong choice. But, you know, she can't help it. She's following her heart. And, you know, we're on this journey to see also if Johnny can reform himself and form a family with her. And if she's also not going to lose the trust of her son, right? forming a relationship with the sensei. So we have to go through that journey. And I think. I think working with, with Billy is just so natural and fun. So we're like, okay, that relationship's great. But now bringing it and revealing it to Miguel was really the high point of, you know, all that she could lose um, in that relationship. But then even seeing that she doesn't lose it, we have to see how are they going to form a family with also Robbie and Williams. And Robbie and Miguel are at odds. So there's a lot of challenges there, but, yeah, you so know, look at yours there. It was the reveal also of the fact that her past, we just talked about uh, Amanda's past, her past too is going to come back to make a major stick in this season. So you got a lot to, uh, to see, a lot of hearts together. I just love, I love the relationship working with Vanessa is awesome. I, I love how Carmen is 
accepts Josh. I mean, she, you know, it's that unconditional love that sets him free. You know, it's the one thing he's looking for. She, he found it first in Miguel, who needed him. And then, you know, Miguel came from Carmen. And Diaz family. Yeah. So there's a little yeah. Diaz is a good. Yeah. Very good. Yes. And I like the uh, bananas. <laughs> <laughs> they they're, they're, they're no, they're plantains. No, they're plantains. Best bananas ever. <laughs> So uh, and, and also I just want to ask you as well, Gianni, where Dimitri, everybody, when you to look at every single character that, uh, that from last season, everybody was here and other people were not, they all had these marks and the same to be said. He has gone from a place where he wanted nothing to do with karate. It's like his life. He got his friend back finally. So that that arc and the way that you guys play it off each other, like what's what was it like with Dimitri going into uh, that scene? Yeah, his arc was uh, getting beat up all the time, so like only getting beat up some of the time. So I'm super happy for him. Um, uh, no, I'm super happy for my guy Dimitri. You know, he's finally getting you know kind of badass. Sorry for the kids out there. Uh, he's, he's got the hot girl at school. Uh, yeah, honestly, life is really going well for Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to change it though. You know, the means we could change up. You, know. you probably just did. I, I probably did. Yeah. He's gonna die season five. Uh, <laughs> he's got a hell of a spinning heel kick too. Hey, there you go. Yes. Hey, I got a lot of life. Talk about kicks. Talk about crying. Let's start with Dimitri. Your crop and everything you, you did in this season. So extraordinary. I thought you did such a great job with your training and everything. Because there was a lot in Smith that I had to do this year. So, do you feel that the training this year, or excuse me, past season was more intense? You were more, do you feel more invested? How, how, how did you feel about the, the training in general with the product? I think I've always taken it very seriously as like a, a, a couple to the acting aspect of this job. I mean, this is. Karate Kid World, it's Cobra Kai, it's as much a part of it as the standing on the line and talking for me, it, um, if not more so, because I think we get to tell a lot of our story through the karate that we do, and, and so it's always been incredibly important to me, um, but I definitely feel like this, this last season, I got to dive into it in a different way, um, rather than, you know, this really cool, fun, added thing that we get to do, it became incredibly important to me that it um, was super grounded and where it was coming from and learning the, the absolute basics and the way that I could then expand on them. Um, we have an incredible stunts team and, you know, Ken Fairfield and Don Lee and Sucky Hom and uh, just so many incredible people, Olivia, and, and I'm doing all of the names. And okay, anyway, the point being, um, we have this incredible team who made it, uh, yes, a challenge, but, but made it easy and made it fun and made it something that uh, is important to me in my off season, absolutely, and, and in the whole the whole world of it. But it was a lot of work, I'm not gonna lie. It was, um, I mean, I was in there probably average six days a week. We were we were coming in on weekends. We would get uh, donuts on Sundays, and we would eat Krispy Kreme donuts and train karate, which is like, <laughs> kind of down, which is, but like worth it. Um, and we would, uh, you know, and, and especially with, with for me, with uh, season four with Samantha, with her size and her weapons, that was super, super important to me to take it super seriously. Um, never more than like two feet away from them. I'm not gonna lie, when we came out here and we rehearsed earlier, I stole two off the back wall. And I was She stabbed us with them. <laughs> That's what she does. Everyone's got clues, you just can't see them. No, but, uh, but no, it's, it's incredibly important to me. I think it's such a fun aspect of what we get to do. And I think it adds so much to what we get to say with our characters. Um, and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to dive into it. Well, no so. one trains harder than this, LaRusso. I can tell you. <laughs> some fun games that I'm very, very excited about, but I do want to ask this question because I'm, I think it tells a lot about what is happening on set, and as I asked, who is most likely to, who is most likely to steal someone else's food? John. <laughs> yes. Okay. I will say, he doesn't steal people's food necessarily, but at season one, in the cafeteria scene, when we first meet Dimitri and Eli, 
in between takes, he would steal the the yuhus from other people's like trays, just in the background. And that was the first time I met him. So he was just a chocolate fiend. That, that was my introduction. <laughs> in Jacob's absence, I have no idea. <laughs> no, this is true. Trust me. All right. Who is who is most likely to quote movies on set? <laughs> Marty, I think. You know, you're the, you're the well of cinema. Okay. I would say it's me. I quote movies on Saturdays, but I was like, nobody calls me out. I quote movies all the time. But, uh, but I'll say that's a lot of movies. Thank you very much, honey. I'm going to have my back. Who's most likely to party? Who's most likely to curse? If messing up a tape. Tanner. 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 I know that one right away. Tanner got a talking to, actually. Oh, really? Yeah. Who gave you the talk? Uh, no, my, I learned it from my mom. Uh, no, I got it from some of the producers that maybe I should uh, just try to quiet down on some of the, some of the bad words. You know, yeah. set. All right, fair enough. Thank you for being honest. Okay. Uh, who is most likely to nail their karate on their first try? Right. Tanner. <laughs> See? Awesome. So there we go. Okay, and then the last one here. Um, who is most likely to break into song between takes? Mary. <laughs> What's one of the most you go to? Um, I will never forget the dream sequence from season three with me and Peyton, and we were standing in the backyard, and we were like so like amping ourselves up. Like this has to be larger than life. Like this isn't just like two kids like really karate fighting. This is like Sam's ultimate nightmare. Like getting drowned and all this stuff. And then like we go to start the first take and we're like we're jumping up and down, we're jumping jacks. We're like okay, we're getting each other amped up. We're like we full on did the thing where we ran each other chest the chest. We were like we were getting pro style. We were getting ready. And then as soon as they like are about to call action, I'm like seven again the usual morning. we get to the nitty gritty, but we are going to play some games now with the cast and you guys, the audience, and to help us do that, to help us do that, we're going to bring in two of our favorite comedians and two of our favorite car salesmen, you know them as Louie and Anoush, please welcome Brett Alright, guys, come on, we have to go sit back down. We got All right. <laughs> we got you guys a lot of here. 
No one dressed like Louie Nanoosh? Oh, uh, what do you, yeah, hold on, we got one right here. This, 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 this is, uh, Where did you come from? Who is this no, no, person? Right here. All right. Julian. Julian. Wow, How'd you come from? Here. I don't know where Julian just came just, out of, just like came out of the floor. We got a lot of people repping Cobra Kai. Where's no Miyagi go in here? Come on. Thank you. Oh, there we go. There's Miyagi though. You used to. All right, Dave, we gotta, we, gotta, we gotta start eliminating people here. We got a lot. Oh, that's mean. All right, hey. You. Me. Get to stay on. You yeah, get to he stay. stays. We, like I said, we put him in a suit. He could be you, Dan. This guy? Yeah. This is my buddy. I know. I think he's a little taller, though. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's, yeah. Let's uh, go. Okay, that's what we do. I'm going to say. Let's go. We gotta go quick. Okay, it's gonna be between three people. Okay, well, this kid stays. That kid stays. This kid stays. <laughs> Okay. Let's go. He stays. Let's go. Let's go. Uh, Let's see what we got. Oh, man. I mean, we just got people with T-shirts. We got a bunch of Cobra Kai though. With the yeah. T yeah. This is tough. This is pretty cool. Yeah. All right. All right. You're in. Everyone else. Well, we gotta get one more Eagle Fan. Okay, Eagle Fan. All right, everybody else, go ahead. You gotta sit down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Everybody else, go ahead. You, yeah, you stay down. right here. I like the shirt. You know, I like the shirt. Um, <laughs> I'm not gonna tell you about this. All, All right, right, let's go. Everybody, sit yeah, out yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Watch all the Sit out. We're gonna keep the kids. This is a great match. Oh, okay. All right. Come Ready? On. You're still in. Where? Let's go. Where? Where are your parents? Where are they? Yeah, where? Where is that? Over there? Okay, good. Alright. Yeah, this just looks like really right relaxed. Right he's just like chilling. Oh, yeah? He's like, what's up? I'm part of the cast now. Yeah, you guys are Thank you. Alright, turn around because we're going to let everybody here vote. Okay, turn around. The cast is going to vote on your costumes. Now, uh, I'm going to start with. What, what do you want to go from this side to this side? Yeah, whatever. Alright. Got, well, no, this is tough. We got to eliminate this in one. You stay, you stay. Uh, the grown man, you got to sit down, bro. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. Go ahead, sit down. What are you doing? Johnny. <laughs> just like All right. Life. Just like I mean, life. you have it over here. How are we going to eliminate this guy? <laughs> or this guy? Or that guy? All right. I'll do it, Let's man, because I'm the bad guy. All right. We're definitely keeping the kid with the skeleton outfit. Yeah, you're yeah. staying. Alright. You! Get out of here! Yeah, hey. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I know you like this. I like it. We can't do the auto group because this kid's representing the family. How you doing? Representing the family. Okay. Alright, let's oh, see. Man, teenagers, thank you for coming up, though. You too. Come on. Mm. Don't mess with my heart. Right, move on in. You're alright, Hawk. Okay, okay. We got <laughs> three Cobra Kai's here. They've got the bandana, so they're staying. Get out of here! Alright. Hey! <laughs> Whoa! Oh, you nervous? Oh, you getting nervous? Hey, this kid, you get right over here now with the shirt. Oh! Come on, buddy, you get over here. This kid's great. Okay. What are you doing, alright? You're doing great. Tell everybody, what are you doing? Awesome. That's good, man. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> All right. I don't know which one of you are going to vote him out. Yeah, good luck, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> okay, right. um, let's start voting. Let's do it. All right. Everyone in the cast, just point to who you hate. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I don't want any problems. <laughs> okay, uh, I guess we'll just put our hand over and you uh, raise your hand if you uh, want. <laughs> this is so uncomfortable. Good luck, guys. Right here. Yeah, you yeah. stay because you got the shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Everyone else, sorry. We love you so much. Thanks sorry. for coming. You gotta go back though. We have like cheap cookies. I'll give you a high back. five. Hey, yeah. You touched the noosh. Hey. Oh, you stay. All right. There. Yeah, you can go. Unless oh. you want to stay. Oh, man. This is what you do. How are you Because you're heartless. Oh. <laughs> 
Marcus. Oh, yeah. He looked over here. He was like, he was like should yeah, I know? You come up here. Right here. Come on. And a car. Right here. These are our three finals. Alright. You did good, though. That's amazing. Oh. Does that mean that they're out? There you go. Give me some There you go, dog. Look at that. Thank you, you guys are out. Thank you very much for coming. All right, oh, wait, which way you go? Can I go this way? All right, you guys, turn around, let the crowd take a look at you. I love the crowd! I don't want to put this on. All right, yeah. I don't want to see Courtney yelling like a crazy person anymore. All right, Dan, go ahead, Dan. You, Dan, you're the evil one, so you go ahead. All right! Guess what the teams are? Uh, <laughs> it's gonna be me 
Miyagi Do, Cobra Kai, and Eagle Fruit. And on this side of the house, front side, you guys are Miyagi Do. Okay, so I'll pick a Miyagi Do. This side of the house, you guys represent Eagle Fruit.